in the Cayman Islands. Just the second game he's playing this season. Had missed nine of the previous ten dating back to the Final Four last year. And he recovers on the opening tip, but it's taken back by Howell. And here comes the ULM with the first possession in the maroon and gold here on the road. Officials KB Burdett Jr., Jeb Hartness, and Chris Beaver. Only the second ever meeting between Tulane and ULM. Got to go back to 1974. A game that ULM won in New Orleans, 95-73. The first matchup in about 48 years. Shot clock's inside five. This is LaCour on a leaner. And he misses in a rebound for Jalen Forbes. So for Ron Hunter, fourth lineup in seven games, but his intended starters now. Cook back after the hamstring injury, James Forbes. Holloway has been terrific in his first year with the Green Wave, and Kevin Cross, who comes in top ten in the conference in points, rebounds, and assists, as he often does. Around the horn, it's James on a three. He got it. And that's a big shot for Sion James, who this season we've already seen his confidence with his outside shot starting to grow. If he can become a consistent offensive threat, that just makes Tulane all the more dangerous. For Keith Richard, it has been a juggling act in their starting lineup. Fifth and eight games that they have used. They're without their one of their better players. They're only all-conference selection in the preseason in Nika Metzclarishavili. He's out with a knee injury here today, and he may miss some time over the next couple of weeks. A miss from Blackman, and here comes Cross. It's Cook finding James. Hit one moments ago. Not that time. Holloway crashing the glass, and it goes out to Gallia. This is LaCour. Pulls up and misses. And batted out by Bafudo on a three, and it's knocked in by Gallia. Big second chance opportunity there for ULM. They're going to have to take advantage of those. They're not a great shooting team. And that's one of the things that Coach Richard is really emphasizing for them is to continue to stay at it. Galliani, who hit that three moments ago, is having a career year. He spent two years at Buffalo, then a year at South Plains Junior College in Texas. He started five times this year, averaging 10 in those games, 8.3, after averaging a point and a half in two years at Buffalo. He's been a nice piece and a nice surprise for Keith Richard. It's cross up top, inside 10 on the timer, and blocked away by Bafuda. Well, that's what he does. We were talking about it in the open. Third of the sunbound in blocks per game coming in. And that size is going to be a problem for Tulane. They've got to make the defense and get him maybe to pull out a little bit more to defend Cross. But what that does is it takes Cross away as a passer in the middle of the uh, court. It's Forbes catching and shoot. And off on a three. He has really struggled to shoot the three ball so far this year. He was up a little bit on in the uh, tournament last week. Yeah, a little bit better um, down in, in the Caymans. Shot about 39% from three, but still struggling, especially within uh, inside the arc. Yeah, who made it three moments ago. Back to Bafudo. Only his second miss in the last couple of games. Eight for nine for him Saturday against Loyola, Maryland, in a career-high 20-point performance. ULM 2-5 and five coming in, Tulane 4-2 and two after the 3-0 and oh start, lost 2-3 of three last week and a foul on the floor. <coughs> James is bumped. Then we look at our keys to the game brought to you by Louisiana Lottery. Yeah, both teams are trying to get dialed in from deep. Neither one of them as of late has been shooting the ball particularly well from distance, but particularly for ULM, it's been a real sore spot. They've not shot it well, they've allowed opponents to shoot it well. If ULM is going to win this game, they've got to increase the tempo. When they lose, they're playing in the 50s, and their opponents are scoring, outscoring them almost 20 points a game. They've got to run tonight. And for Tulane, it's all about finally getting Jalen Forbes going. He's such an important part of this team, and over the last several games, he just has not been himself. LaCour knocks down a triple, and ULM has made their first couple shots from deep and has an early lead here on the road of 6-3. It's cross for James around a screen and down the lane. Jalen Cook could not miss the other night at his debut and misfires there from three. LaCour on the move and backs it outside for Howell. ULM is a team this year, 32% from three-point range. But they want to keep taking them. We talked to Keith Richard about it. They want to go more inside out, though. That's something they did very well on Saturday. Cross lost it, and it's a foul on the floor. Howell just kind of wrong place, wrong time. And that will take us to our 
First media time out of the day. Early lead is 6-3. Cross and some pain early on in this first half. A decade of power performance. During the familiarity between those two, eight years Ron Hunter spent at Georgia State. Keith Richard again, his 13th season at ULM. So he knows the defense that Ron Hunter wants to play very well. Yeah, he talks about, and as Jalen Forbes hits that three there to get him going. But one of the things Coach Richard talked about is facing this two lane with a Ron Hunter's matchup zone is that what makes it so unusual is that he's committed to it way, the way other coaches may not be, who will throw something else at you. Tulane's going to stay in that zone, and that means ULM is going to have to be very disciplined. He wants to see the ball move quickly, and he wants to see better shot selection from his team. Inside, they feed it to Bufuto. Kick out. It's Galleon, and he's got a second three of the first half and strings the guitar. As you talked about, they went inside first and then reversed the ball to the opposite side for a wide open corner three. Very good offense execution for ULM at the start. It's Cook. Cross on the offensive glass. Back up and misses. And Bafuto will rebound. So ULM doing it from distance early. 0 for 5 from two point range, 3 for 3 from distance. And a three-point lead is the result. They were two for 12 Saturday against Loyola, Maryland from three-point range. LaCour, lob it down low, Bafuto. Double team comes there. It's Howell outside. LaCour on a baseline pull-up. And a rebound for Sion James. Cook. And a skip pass. Holloway for three. Going two of seven from distance. Yeah, just nothing really going for the wave right now. I'm surprised that James pulled up in that transition opportunity. Physically, he's so much bigger than the rest of the ULM backcourt. That might have been an opportunity there for him to get some contact and get to the line. You can see the way that ULM is moving the ball early, working it side to side, as Keith Richard talked about. That is a jump shot for Thomas Howell, third-year sophomore from Natchitoches, and ULM's lead is five. Cook. They're using the, the mid post as well, that free throw line. Of now they are giving a lot of threes to Tulane early, and the Green Wave aren't cashing in. Two for eight now. So eight of their first ten shots have come from beyond the arc. Six gone in this opening half. Tulane's in a two-minute scoring drop. Blackman, wide open, triple. He knocks it down. ULM is on fire, torching the Nets early. They've made all four of their threes, and their lead is eight. You know, what do you see? They go back again to the high post and allow Howell to make that pass. Forbes inside for Cross, and he traveled. It's already three early turnovers. Look, if you're going to pull off a, an upset on the road, what do you need? You need to shoot better than you normally shoot. You need to take care of the basketball, and you need to for, force some turnovers by your opponent. So far, ULM has done everything correct. Uh, they, they, you could question some of the shots that they've taken in, at the two-point range, but you got an eight-point lead seven minutes into the ball game on the road. Yeah, you're doing you're doing things right. Again, they've made all four of their threes, and these have been open looks, uh, uncontested on most of them. Tulane did allow their three opponents in the Cayman Islands to shoot 42% from three-point range. Ron Hunter stressed that to us. Have to be better there defending from beyond the arc. Well, Core tries a three, and there is the first miss from distance, but an offensive rebound. ULM's done much better on the offensive glass this year than last year. Came in third of the Sun Belt, an offensive rebound. McCor slithers along the baseline. Blackman with five on the timer. Howell will try a three. Forbes rebounds. Tulane seems just a step slow right now. R.J. McGee is in, along with Trey Williams for the first time. Williams had started the previous couple of games. Average nine points over those couple in the Cayman Islands. Shot clock is at five. It's Forbes at three. Another wide-open look. He can't cash in. you just like to see Forbes put some more balance in his game right now. It's just so overwhelmingly from deep. 
He's getting two more threes a game this year, and his two-point attempts have gone down. I think that's a direct that directly ties into his low shooting percentage. He had made seven of his past 15 threes entering tonight. Got clock inside 10 again. You can see ULM wants to slow this game down as much as they can. LaCour lost it in the lane. Gets on top of it. Shot clock is at zero. That shot won't count from Howell. And a turnover on ULM, their first. But the three-point shooting from ULM early has been impressive. Galleon's not bench. Not to mention the competition level upped a little bit last yes, week as well. Those are three pretty good teams they played. We're inside 11 and a half to go in this opening half. 8 nothing run for ULM. That's a tough floater for Forbes with some contact and puts it in. You like to see him be aggressive, though. The three-point shot has not been going down tonight. Give yourself an opportunity a little bit closer. Starting five is still out there for ULM. Their bench has shortened significantly as Galleon's shot won't count. It's a foul on the floor on Trey Williams. We mentioned they are without Nika Metzklarishavili. That's a name that uh, we're lucky we don't have to say too much here tonight, but he's a talented player. They're only priests in Sunbelt Conference selection. And A.D. Diju, a 6'11", transfer from UAB, is out with a torn ACL. He toured in the third day of their practice, second straight year with a torn ACL. So that's a lot of size that Keith Richard is down. And... When you're a mid-major program, size is something that's hard to come by. I mean, you look at this two-lane program, and it doesn't have a ton of it. You know, size can be that great equalizer when you are missing shots, giving you those second-chance opportunities. Fortunately for ULM, their bigs have responded very well to start this game. Blackman's got another three. His second, and they're five for seven from downtown. Again, they made just two of 12 on Saturday. Forbes answers. So Forbes has eight of the two lane 11. Back and forth we go. Lead is a half dozen for ULM. Yeah, and I think, you know, nine total threes made for ULM the last couple of games. They're on pace to hit that in the first half here. Galleon on a pull. -up. Cook missed time the jump with McGee. ULM has another second chance opportunity. Powell can't finish. And the rebound for Cross. This is where they're at their best, but he can initiate the break. Into the lane he goes. It's Trey Williams, the Oregon State transfer. Back to Cross, shooting it well from three, and that went halfway down and out. And that's just how it's gone for Tulane tonight from deep, but you're starting to see them lock in a little bit more defensively. Blackman hands off for Howell, right back to him, and he traveled. Second turnover on ULM. Keith Richard, 62 years young, Baton Rouge native. He's got a lot of Louisiana guys on his team, six of them. He's got a lot of transfers on his team, six of them. He's talking about a guy who had to build through the portal in a big way, acclimate a lot of new faces. He told us, you know, the benefit he's got, he's got older guys who have played a lot of Division I basketball. And, and that's going to translate guys who've been in, some of them have been in winning situations and have helped build up a program, and that's what they're being asked to do now. Cook can't finish, wanted to foul, and LaCour the other way, a five on four briefly. They lob it in towards Bafudo. great play defensively by Cook. He was one of the best in terms of steals in the American last year. He's 0 for 3 to start this game. Drives on Blackman. Given no room. Blackman, one of the better defenders on this team. Transfer from North Alabama, he's putting a lot of big games. Inside, McGee misses. Had the chair pulled on him. It's LaCour on a pull-up. And Bafudo can't keep it alive. And he leaves them in shot attempts coming in, but it has been a struggle to make them. And you can see it's just it's a little bit of his body is, a, is off balance, it seems, whenever he's taking his shots. McGee, that's on balance, and that's a three. The ULM wants time, 17-14. As McGee gets on the board, 11 straight Division I games dating back to last year. And they're trying to flip that script tonight. They also haven't won yet on the road. They haven't won away from home so far this year, and that's a streak that's nine straight as well. Shot clock is 10 for Blackman. Noble days on for the first time for Tulane. In the mid post, it's Bolden. Zachary, Louisiana native, turns it over. So he's on for ULM along with Langston Powell, the Pearl River Community College product for the first time. Cook 
All kinds of moves. Blackman stays with him. Days needs an outlet, and he finds Cook. Blackman giving up no room. That's a tough one for Cook, and he drilled it. We're tied at 17. Jalen Cook is a performer. Uh, if that, if we know one thing about that young man. And there he goes again. And a foul on Bolden. You were saying? <laughs> there aren't many more players who are going to be timely as Jalen Cook. And as we, as a whole, and Tulane, which does such a great job of team rebounding, tonight they've had their struggles against this ULM team. has been very active. But over the last few minutes, that activity has slowed down a bit. And again, they're 5 for 7 from three-point range. For beautiful dish inside to Holloway. And Tulane has its first lead. So an 11-0 run for the Green Wave, spanning three minutes. And that is how they respond. It's Bolden. Turns, misses. Long rebound, Forbes. Between the legs to keep it in bounds. Holloway skip pass. That's a lot of room to give Cook. Can't pay it off. This is Powell. Blackman outside to Devin Hancock. And misses everything on a three. And a foul. And offensively, what we've seen for ULM is they're not as effective running their offense with Golden playing in that mid post to high post area and flashing in. He's a little bit smaller than Howell, and he doesn't have the ability to see that pa those passing lanes as easily. So Tulane's kind of taken that away, and that's changed ULM's offense. They're in a scoring drought going on four minutes, and they've turned the ball over four times over that span. Forbes looking for days. That's a lot of traffic to try to fit that ball through. But you can see what they're trying to do now. On these last few possessions, Tulane is trying to get into the heart of that ULM defense and make them collapse and then find someone cutting into those open spaces. And Tulane has a number of players who are good off the ball. A lot of dribbling for Blackman. It's Hancock. The transfer from Milwaukee. And Bolden is fouled. Golden five and gold is a guy we talked to Keith Richard about, someone they're coveting highly. Zachary Native, he won back-to-back -back 5A championships there. He was the LSWA 5A most outstanding player, the championship game MVP. He was the finals for Louisiana Gatorade Player of the Year. A skip pass to Hancock, another air ball. Bolden an offensive rebound, misses there with a day's contest. And another foul. And that one's on the Warhawks. So another difficult possession there. Just flying in after the missed three. And that's, that's, I think that's Hancock trying to make up for a mistake. And that's the worst thing you can try to do is, is get something back. Just play the game. Continue to play the game. Instead, he picks up the foul, and now Tulane coming back the other way with a chance to extend this lead. We saw Cross get banged up earlier when he went to the floor. He's back in with Cook, and then Holloway, Forbes, and James the five. Tulane by two, inside six to play in the opening half. It's Cook, and now Forbes, wide open look. Got it. First player on their way in double figures with 11. That one couldn't have looked better coming off of his hands. The rotation, his fingers were spread, and you, just, that ball just was perfectly set into the net. A 14-0 run. Talk about flipping a game around. Two lanes made six threes. ULM's hit five of nine. Bolden for Hancock. Outside the lefty Powell. Another miss from three. Offensive rebound, Bolden. He's tough in there, but lost it going up. Bolden certainly plays bigger than his size. He's 6'4". He has been attacking the offensive glass relentlessly. Just look at him inside, just giving it everything he has. Just not big enough. Here comes Tulane again. Again, like I said, four, more than four minutes now holding ULM without a bucket. Cook for James. Baseline attack. It's Forbes again. Offensive foul first. 
Good job stepping in by Powell. Turnover number five. And that's the thing for Sion James. You just want to see him be a little bit more selfish. Finish that, try to score that bucket. Turning away probably led to that offensive foul. So five turnovers on Tulane. They came in ninth in Division One, 9.3 per. Something Ron Hunter emphasizes so much. And a baseline two is good for Powell. Comes in averaging a career high 4.9 points. His fourth year in Monroe, fifth year of college basketball, one year of Juco previously. Stopped the scoring drought of more than five and a half minutes. Cross on the baseline. In and out. It's Holloway on the glass. Speaking of guys who play bigger than they are, he's one of them too. He played as the size of a two guard, but plays like a three or a four. He's very strong uh, and very smart. Knows his angles. The Fudo. On a kick to Hancock. Misfires, rebound James. Tulane's second leading rebounder coming in. Hook, first to speed. Extra feed up top, James on a three. And a rebound for Forbes. If you're Tulane, you just would like some of these fast break opportunities to end in layups instead of threes, but... Uh... Forbes, corner pop, got it. Another one. Forbes with 14 in the first half and his fourth triple. If anybody needed a game like this, it's Jalen Forbes. Efficient all around so far. Four of his five makes coming from three. They post up a Fudo. He finds Bolden, and he stepped out of bounds. 329 left in the first half. Tulane has turned what was once a deficit of nine into an eight-point lead. A 19-2 run in the Green Wave on top in eight per game, second most in the conference entering today. Lead is eight points. It's Forbes again. Yes, sir. He's on fire. Forbes, a flamethrower, and an 11-point lead for Tulane. Already with a new season high, and we still got three minutes to go in the first half. Lafuto inside to finish. And we've got a foul. On LaCour. So ULM comes right back. So their second field goal over the past about six and a half minutes, though. 30 to 21 with three to play in this opening half. Tulane trying to find Forbes any way they can right now. He's feeling it. And this is a huge juncture for both of these teams in these final three minutes. If Tulane can push this lead into double figures. Forbes misses there. It's a foul on, I believe, Cross setting a screen. Now, look to me there, David, like Cross bumped Forbes. I thought for a second they were going to call a shooting foul. Let's see this again. You know what? He got knocked back. He was pushed into yeah, to hit. Forbes, so that's the foul call because look, a good hip check there uh, by Gallion, and that sends uh, Cross into Forbes, so there's your foul. And right now, it's not a good idea to get Tulane in the bonus early because as a team they are shooting the ball better than 80% from the free throw line cross one of the main culprits of that this is a one and one for a guy in cross who this season is 26 for 28 at the free throw line we talked about it last year he distract where he made 26 in a row to close AAC play and he misses there, there you, you can go. put that one on me yeah <laughs> absolutely your fault Hey, I just speak the facts. We could have waited until after he shot. That's, that's a good point. <laughs> 2.35 to go. Nine-point lead for Tulane. And three for Blackman, who had made a couple already. And Cross, who's a terrific defensive rebounder, grabs another. His fourth already. As I was saying earlier, with two minutes and 20 seconds to go here, Tulane can either give this, themselves a double-digit lead going into the half, or if you're ULM, you hit a couple threes maybe, and you cut this lead into a manageable uh, position as you go into the second half. And that's just where they want to be. They want to be within striking distance heading into the last ten minutes of this ball game. Well, that's an offensive foul on Cross. Tried to plead his case, but picks up his first. So four team fouls on Tulane. ULM the ball trailing by nine after once leading by nine early in this first half. 
It's LaCour. They got to get him going. Their leading scorer coming in, but has done it at a low efficiency. He's one for six so far. Pafudo, backdoor feed, looking high low, and taken by Cross. And ULM, who didn't turn it over the first nine minutes, has seven now since. Forbes again. And Holloway can't grab that one. Quick lesson for our big men throwing post-entry passes. Never throw bounce passes at a big man's feet. LaCour on James, poked away, taken by Cook. Two on one break. Forbes a sidestep, counted and one. 19 first half points for Forbes. And a chance for one more at the line. Forbes gives Tulane now an 11 point lead, a chance to go for 12. Look at that finish, Euro step, finishing with the right hand off the glass. Just great body control and fantastic touch. And right now, everything Jalen Forbes is putting up is going down. 94% free the shooter. Now, you can't blame me on that one. You I can blame the gra- you can blame the, No, you can blame the graphics team for popping it up. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Hey, you shoot 80% as a team. I would say that's worth noting coming in, but a couple of misses back-to-back. Mafudo down to the floor with it, a tie-up, and possession arrow is going to favor ULM. Again, ULM making the mistake. You bring that ball down once you get into traffic. Tulane has four people in the lane waiting for you. It's going to be really hard to get that ball through there. So the shot clock is at 9, one twelve to go in this opening half. What have you seen offensively here for ULM, why they've struggled down this stretch of the first half? Well, they got away from getting the ball into Bufudo, who was able to get some easy shots early in the game. They went inside out, got some opposite side three-pointers that were really open looks. But now, this may be their first open three in quite some time, and they hit it. LaCour, that's their sixth from distance. That is his second field goal. He's two for seven. 32-24. 32-24. 50 seconds to go opening half. Cross, that's a tough one over Bafudo. Guy who's 6'10 with a 7'3 wingspan. LaCour, they can go 2 for 1 if they play this right. And it looks like an opportunity missed and a foul. It's the fifth team foul. It's on James, and that is his second. That was a tough call for James. He thought he had a good strip and wanted to take it in the other direction. Uh, but now this really does give you all them that opportunity maybe to get that two for one if they can get this shot off. They're not going to the line yet, I'm sorry, but if, if they can get a shot off here quickly, maybe they can get a two for one, but only 38 seconds remaining. You saw there coming up at the half, Title IX impact. It's been 50 years and also halftime highlights and stats. All that coming up at the break. About a 15-second game clock, shot clock difference. This is Gallion, who's been quiet since making a couple of threes early. Day's got his hand on another one. This is another tie-up, and the possession this time will give it to Tulane. It got really physical in there on that possession. Um, I mean, look at look at this. You got one bump, block shot, and then you have bodies all on the floor. And we've seen that a number of times here in this first half. Neither one of these teams has come here to lose tonight. They're willing to give it all, put on the floor, get the floor burns. Do all of that, and that's what it, that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see for teams that are coming off of losses. Do you have the energy and the activity to fight for a win? So the shot clock is dark. Tulane can play for the final shot of this opening half. They'll spread the floor for Cook. Blackman's done a nice job on him in his opening half. Cook. Down the lane he goes, a floater is good, and he'll have a chance for one more. We've seen that floater from Jalen Cook so often. He's such a master of it. Like two steps in and knowing right where the defender is going to be, going over the top, and he just isn't given that spot to land. The shot goes in, and now Jalen Cook headed to that free throw line. Has been an example of picking your spots. That's what Cook has done in this opening half. Look, only five points, but six assists. So he's been playmaking for the rest of his teammates and hasn't let his rough shooting start keep him from being an effective player for his team. And more importantly, he makes the first free throw for Tulane, so we're slightly off the hook 
Six seconds to go, an 11 point game. It's Blackman. Clock down to three, down to two. Pull up, pop. No. And that will take us to halftime in New Orleans. They've got to get something from Bafudo here in the second half. ULM starts with it. Down by 11 after leading by as many as nine in the opening half. And you can see the numbers from two-point range versus three-point range. Double the mix from three versus inside the arc. That's got to change, you figure. Tipped out of bounds by Cross. And with 14 to shoot, ULM will keep it. And ULM struggling with the entry pass there. You want to give that to Bafuto higher. He throws it at the chest, giving Cross the opportunity to get in there and deflect it. Again, ULM has lost four straight coming in. They do not have a win against a D1 opponent this year. They've lost their last 11 versus D1 opponents. Shot clock's down to three. Does Blackman see it? They've got a hoist, and they don't get it off. And a shot clock violation starts the second half for the Warhawks. And that's got to make Ron Hunter happy that his team comes out of the locker room, engaged defensively, and let's see how that energy uh, transfers to the offensive end now. Felt like they slipped the switch midway through that first half defensively. You can see their numbers from two versus three, a little bit more balanced, but still not many makes inside the arc either way. Cross initiating, as he often does. Forbes, James, made a three in the first half, and he's got another. Give him six, and give Tulane a 14-point lead, their largest. And now James, two for four from distance. Howell sat much the first half with two fouls, misses there. And here comes Tulane. Jalen Cook was quiet in the first half. James, again? Not that time. A little flat on that one. He entered 25% from three, but again, his shots are typically wide open. So they're good looks. Figure they'll go down at some point. LaCour across the lane. That's a tough one. But those are the shots that Keith Richard will live with if they go in. That one does. He's a tough shot taker. There are some people who you want to who are considered tough shot makers. LaCour is definitely a tough shot taker. He looks for degree of difficulty. It almost reminds you of a guy like J.R. Smith. <laughs> you got a wide open three. Now let's let's get a hand oh, in our face. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you give the guy credit because he can certainly make some shots. He was actually born in New Orleans, was LaCour. Was displaced by Katrina. Ended up growing up in Iowa. Became one of the leading scorers in Iowa public high school basketball history. Scored more than 2,500 points in his high school career. Two years at South Alabama, a year at UAB, and now in Monroe. Holloway, that's a tough finish. Went right through Howell to lay it in. Holloway's probably been their most consistent interior scorer today. And he's got a half dozen. Two lanes lead, 14. LaCour for Blackman. He can shoot it. Misses there. And here comes Sion James, pushing the pace. Trailer is cross. Works against Bafudo. That's tough to get it over those long arms. Seven foot three wingspan. LaCour with that mouthpiece out the whole day. Floats that one in. <laughs> those are two very difficult shots. You'd probably have two letters in horse if you tried to make those. And now the question is, does he feel emboldened to take more of those as the game goes on? Forbes, five first half threes. Give him a sixth. He's got 22 points already. And the lead is 15. And there's a look in Jalen Forbes' eyes now. We've seen him do this. You think about the game he had a couple years ago against Cincinnati. Made seven threes in that game. Made six against Drexel a year ago. Has those kind of hot streaks. Bafuto inside, lost the ball. Shot clock's down to five. Galleon's got to go. Inside the paint and muscles it up with one on the shot clock and draws a foul, and Ron Hunter can't believe it. Tulane had that possession defensively. You get the fortunate uh, you know, uh, loose ball off of the hands of uh, Baruto, Bafuto inside. And you just can't close out the possession. And that's the thing. Is you, now you have the clock stopped. And you give ULM an opportunity to add some points and maybe find a rhythm when they have not shot the ball well all game long. Their first free throw attempts of the night. Savion Gallion knocks in that first free throw. Came in at 78.5%. Good for ninth in the Sun Belt Conference. Started his career at Buffalo. We were talking about this earlier. Played sparingly there. 
Played in 29 games over two seasons and averaged a point and a half. And this year, he enters averaging eight and a half points per. Makes both there and has eight on the night. So right near his season average. Back to a 13-point game. Cook against Blackman. This has been a fun matchup tonight. Backdoor feed, Holloway blocked at the summit by Bafudo. Well, there's strength on strength, and Bafudo wins that battle, his third rejection. On a baseline pull, it's Howell knocking it in. How about that turn of events? I was very surprised to see Holloway try to dunk that one. Um, he's not known for his leaping ability. Going up against the long arms of Bafudo there, got turned away. Good feed by Cook to cross. Did a good job to seal off Lacour for two. Kevin Cross is so adept at rolling off of the defender and sealing. And then just great touch around the basket. Those were his first points. Tulane's leading score coming in at 17 per. And Lacour draws a foul on Cook. A couple of Point guards going at it there. Free throws for LaCour when we come back. But Tulane is still rolling from three. How about LaCour on a fade? He's made a couple of tough ones to start this second half. But Forbes has it rolling. And the Green Wave are up 13. Power has just been exciting to watch. Has done just a remarkable job. As LaCour knocks in that first free throw, he came in at just 58%. Again, we mentioned he was born in New Orleans, displaced by Katrina, so grew up in Iowa. Second leading scorer in Des Moines Public Schools history. And the second leading scorer in Iowa Class 4A history with 2,500 points. Averaged 30 as a senior, 29 as a junior. And he scored it pretty well at South Alabama his second year there, too, 13 and a half per. So an 11-point game, inside 16 to play. And a lob pass is out of bounds from Cross looking for Holloway. Yeah, you do that a little too sharp. You know, trying to calculate that distance of getting it over the length, but into the back of that uh, the, the lane there. 45-34. 17 turnovers combined between these two teams. LaCour working on a terrific defender in James. And that is kicked with 16 on the shot clock. It'll reset the 20. Still just a lot of one-on-one -on -one for ULM. They wanted to move that ball. They wanted to. That was the things that Coach Richard talked about was attacking the basket, making the two-lane defense react to it, and then kicking to open shooters. And they still haven't really done that here in the second half. Well, they shot the ball well in their two games at the Emerald Coast Classic. 47% combined in the two, 50% on Saturday against Loyola, Maryland. But tonight, 35%. They've done it pretty much all from three-point range in terms of their makes. Shot clock inside, 10 for Galleon. He's made a couple threes. First time we've seen Wilson. It's two to shoot. He's got to go and does. And it is a shot clock violation. Thought maybe they would let them play the advantage. Another turnover on ULM. And that's back-to-back -back trips. So after talking about them not turning the ball over for what was the first 10 or 11 minutes, ended up, and that's 11 turnovers over the course of the past 15 minutes. And some of these have been unforced errors. They've had two shot clock violations here in the second half already. Forbes, again, not that time. Peach. I'd say so. Still an 11-point game. ULM is hanging around. And that is another turnover. Well, that won't help the cause. Or unforced the, errors, and that's that's the worst part of it, unforced errors. I mean, it, 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 at least they aren't live ball turnovers where Tulane is able to run, but they are taking away possessions in a game that's still relatively close. They came in 13th out of 14 teams at the Sun Belt, Two turnovers per game. Puck takes contact, and he will get to the free throw line. A guy who had... Yeah, again, not Cook's best offensive performance tonight as far as shooting the basketball goes, but he's taken it into the rim a couple of times and go back to the free throw line now for his second trip. He's assist, you know, got seven assists already tonight, so he's been he's played the part of floor general for this team, and he's taken what's been available to him. Uh, I think that that's, as he's coming back from that injury, that's what you want to see out of it, the maturity of, of your guards and your leaders on your team to know tonight's not a night I need to get 20. Let me get everybody else involved. 
Let me get some easy buckets for my teammates and pick my spots. And Jalen Cook, I think, has done a good job of that tonight. Uh, he played 24 games last year. He scored in double figures 22 times. Makes both there. Shot it at 80% at the free throw line last year. Good for eighth in the American. Back to a 13-point game. Largest lead for Tulane has been 15. ULM really has to get something going here offensively. This is Jacob Wilson, true freshman from Baton Rouge, Liberty Magnet High School. Steps through a double team, finds Paputo. That's a little outside his range. Wilson, though, rebounds, and he will go to the line. Well, again, we talked about the offensive glass could be their best friend in the second half, and they're crashing it often. Yeah, Paputo, uh, not a great shot, but great positioning on the offensive glass for Wilson, and takes the nudge from Holloway, gets himself to the line. No free throw attempts in the first half. This is number five for ULM here in the second. And their first miss. Now four for five. Well, Wilson is a senior at Liberty Magnet High School in Baton Rouge. Just under 20 points per six rebounds, three and a half assists, a first team all state selection. Scored almost 2,000 in his career. The Patriots were D2 runners up in his senior year. He went up against Jalen Cook a couple times playing in Baton Rouge. That one's good. Lead a dozen. Well, coming up this weekend, they don't get bigger than that one. 21st ranked Tulane, 22nd ranked UCF, AAC football championship. Long time coming for Tulane. Trying to get it done at home this weekend. James misses. Rebound McGee, knocked around to cross, drives it baseline and covers it home. Let's add a primal roar too. An emphatic finish for his second field goal. A little frustration for Kevin Cross tonight. He's had a couple of shots blocked. He's had to deal with the seven-footer. Let it out. by Forbes. James on the deck for it. Mafudo foul. We wondered where the energy would come from. That play may have ignited them. If anybody's going to supply the energy for Tulane, it's going to be Kevin Cross. They rely on him so much for his intelligence, his skill, and his heart. And you see right then again... Given the task of dealing with guys much bigger than him on a night-to-night -night basis, he is relentless. Cook. Oh, weaves through traffic. And a scoop shot finish. That was pretty. Give him 10 points into double figures again. 24th time in 26 games with Tulane. Galleon takes some contact. Cook went down. Galleon gets it back. Drives it inside. Blocked away by Cross. It's almost like they've awoken the Giant now. <laughs> Kevin Cross, who was kind of silent offensively in the first half. He's starting to feel it. Over there, great right-handed block. And look at look at him now. The energy is there. Beating his chest. He did on the offensive end. He's there on the defensive end. And there's some pride being showed by Kevin Cross right now protecting his home court. Only four points for him on two for eight shooting. But he's got six rebounds, three assists, a block, and a couple steals. And ULM has not made a shot in about three and a half minutes. So this is the second lengthy drought they've had for the floor in this game already. Had one in the first half where they went about six minutes without making a shot. Good job there mopping up the sweat on the floor. Keith Richard's team trying to find something. I thought that was coming towards us for a second. Yeah, I was getting my hands ready. McCor bounces for Blackman. Timer's inside 10. They've got to get something here. It's Howell fading away and hits. Howell seems to like that little mid-range turnaround jumper there. Keith Richard was speaking highly of him, a guy who's improved every single year, averaging per high this season. Uh, miss from Cook. Has not been his night from distance. Here comes LaCour. And kicked by Cook with 12.25 to go. So a 14-point lead for Tulane in a game that has featured a 23-point turnaround. ULM led this game early by 9. Green Waver 50% in the second half. ULM has turned it over four times in their 15 trips down the court in the second half. 
It's a three for Blackman. And that one is through. They needed that badly. That ends that drought. And it gets it back again. They have not been able to shake ULM. Tulane, is, every time they get it up to around 16, here's ULM back in it at 11. Hook is bumped and fouled. Now here's the problem for the for the Warhawks. Is soon they're going to be sending Tulane to the line and shooting free throws. Rest of the way, we we talked about how good a free throw shooting team that Tulane is. ULM cannot allow them to get into the bonus early. Cook hides behind the screen, misses on a three. And a long rebound means LaCour can run. Three on two. He goes down the lane, muscles it up and in. That's impressive strength there from LaCour. Give him 14 and a chance for one more. All of a sudden, the lead is down to single digits. ULM making their way back. But Kevin Cross supplying the energy boost for Tule. Nine-point game here in New Orleans. Decade. They've also lost 11 straight against D1 opponents. And a miss on that free throw by LaCour. So he can't complete the three-point play, but it's a nine-point game. So ULM is hanging around. Now can they get stops becomes the question. Forbes with McGee. James, Cross, and Williams, the five. LaCour reaches in. Shot clock is inside of ten for James. Works on Howell. Down the lane he goes and poked away. It'll stay with Tulane with five to shoot. You know, Tulane trying to get something going towards the rim, but the defense is packing itself in right now. Tulane has not been as hot from three-point range here in the second half. Now just 10 of 26. So it looks like ULM is, wants them to shoot more threes, and maybe they can turn those into quick opportunities going the other way. Five to shoot. James has to go. Does he see it? He's got he's got Forbes and a foul with one on the shot clock. Keith Richard is the only reaction you figure a coach would have. Hands on the head in disbelief. Yeah. What can you say? I mean, you know, either you're going to argue with the official in that situation, or you're just disappointed in in the fact that you played 34 seconds of good defense and you give it away with the last second. But for Tulane, that's a needed opportunity to get to the line because offensively they have not looked good over the last few minutes. Free throw in for Forbes. His second free throw attempt tonight. So he had 19 in the first half. He's now got four in the second. Came in averaging 16.7, but again shooting 36% from the field. So very efficient tonight. He's made two-thirds of his shots. And that one is up and in. Ties a season high with 24 points. And Tulane's lead is double digits again at 11. Howell finds Bafuto. And now Blackman. They want to post Bafuto. They've got him. Oh, up and in. That was crafty. Just kind of lofted it over the left shoulder. The touch was nice. The footwork. Was he was looking at the basket? I don't even. I'm not sure he <laughs> was. It felt like it was an over-the-shoulder flip there. Between he and LaCour, we've seen some impressive shot making tonight. And that pass goes through the hands of McGee. Trouble with it. Out of bounds. So ULM within nine and a chance with a three to make this a two-possession game. This two-lane offense has just kind of become very disjointed here in the second half. You have not seen the ball movement. We've not seen the quick shots. Uh, they just and they certainly haven't gotten any fast break opportunities uh, so they've allowed ULM to continue to hang around and they're three shots away three shots away from tying his ball game. eight turnovers for a team that came in averaging just north of nine per game ninth fewest nationally it's LaCour has had the hot hand in the second half lost his dribble out to Powell drives on Forbes turns flips it up and in and it's a seven point game now ULM is finding some luck inside. They've gotten a couple of buckets in the paint. Not relying on that three. Cross wants to back it on to Bafuto. Tries a triple. And a foul going against Holloway. I don't think that's the shot that Ron Hunter wants. 
And a seven-point game with 10.04 to go. All kinds of momentum for the Warhawks now. Yeah, step back three from your big man over a big man is not really the shot you want when you still have time on the clock. There was no ball movement. There was no screen action. And now ULM's going to come back down here. I imagine they're going to throw it inside again and see if they can either play off of Bufudo or get Howell another mid-range shot. But they're using their size right now offensively, and let's see if they continue to do so. That was a second foul on Cross. By the way, Sion James out there on the floor with three fouls. And five is a team on Tulane. Blackman on a baseline drive. Gets a step on Williams. Drop off for Bufudo. Here comes ULM. They've made their last six shots from the field. They're within five points. And a foul is called against ULM. Noble Day is able to draw it. You can see that field goal drought. I mean, eight buckets already, you know, from two point range in the second half for ULM. They had three inside the arc in the entire first half. They've got eight here in the second. They're nine for 15 from the floor in the first ten and a half minutes of this second half. And within five, backdoor feed, beautifully done. And James able to soar and finish. That was from a standing jump. Great finish. ULM has made its last six. Can they inch closer? Again, that Howell. high post down to the low post. It's Bufudo. That's too easy. Amazing what happens when he gets the ball down low. He finishes nearly every time. It worked for them in the first half, and they went away from it, especially when Howell was on the bench. But now, that high-low game again, once again paying dividends for ULM. Noble Days almost shuffled the feet. It's Forbes. James open again on the back door. He got hit, too. No call. Ron Hunter wanted it. And James able to sneak back door. He becomes the third Tulane player in double figures with 10. Well, now Tulane has to meet ULM physically. And they're going to set to kind of be the go-to guy. And then someone named, named Jelly Walker comes along, who, of course, Tulane fans know. He's right now leading the nation in scoring Conference USA Player of the Year last year. So we kind of get buried on the guard depth chart. Comes to ULM as a go-to scorer and a very efficient night so far. Can it continue? No. Offensive rebound, though, for Powell. ULM trying to inch closer. Bafuto inside lays it in. Eight of his ten in the second half. And ULM is within five again. Two shots for Maputo in the first half. Four shots here in the second half, and he's just been so good for them. Forbes, catch and shoot, not that time. The shots have gotten progressively tougher for him. Can ULM get within a possession? Basket here, they do just that. they got to go back inside here. I, I, I wouldn't be staying outside. Your, your big man has done such great work for you. Work through him. He's got three inches on Holloway, wants the back of him. His pass knocked away and goes into the ULM bench with eight to shoot. 7.35 to go. We near crunch time in New Orleans. Tulane's lead is down to five. Round things out. So you got to protect your home floor, and here comes ULM within five points, trying to make it a single possession game as LaCour fires and misses, and a long rebound to Powell. Their 10th offensive rebound to just six for Tulane. If you're ULM, what you don't want to do now is you've got plenty of time. There's seven minutes left in this ballgame. You don't need to get it back there. in one shot. Well, that hurts. A chance to make it a single possession. Instead, Tulane can stretch it. We near seven to play. It's Cross working his way inside. Pirouettes and draws a foul. He'll go to the line. That's a good decision to make right there uh, for Cross. When your team's not hitting shots, what do you need to do? You need to get back into the paint and create opportunities with contact, create something around the basket. And Kevin Cross, no matter what he's going, who he's going up against, no matter how big they are, he feels like he can get himself to the line, and he did. And this is the first one. Well, we mentioned he came in shooting free throws just south of 93%. Good for second best in the American, only behind Jalen Forbes. He has now missed both of his free throw attempts. Gets that one. So he's back on track. 
had missed two all year, 26 of 28 entering tonight, and has missed two today. 58-52, inside seven to play. ULM trying for its first road win since last February. It's Bafudo. He's been the guy in the second half, as has LaCour. Misses there. He's certainly more comfortable on the mid-range shots, despite the difficulty. But he's wanting to take those threes right now. And I don't know if that's the best choice. Cook. <laughs> what a move. Weaving his way through traffic. Another scoop, another bucket, and give him a dozen. His understanding of angles off the glass. We see it at least twice a game on a layup from him. LaCour into the paint. And back out for Blackman. Quiet second half for him. And six in the first half, just three in the second. It's Powell working on Forbes. He's a lefty but misses. And the rebound to Holloway. Eight-point lead and the ball for Tulane inside six to play. It's Cook to cross. Lost it out of bounds. And they'll say last touched by ULM. And after that last possession by the Warhawks, you saw Coach Richard really emphasizing to his guards, go back inside. He's open, he's open. They want to see he wants to see that ball go back into Vafudo and work inside out. Cook curls, knocked away. Bafudo to Blackman. He was trying to pass the head to Powell. Some of the ULM players calling for a clear path. I don't think they'll get that with 544 left. But that is another foul on Tulane. It's their sixth. So they're one away now for the bonus rest of the way. Yeah, that, that wasn't going to be a clear path. His body's turned. He's not headed towards the basket. He's trying to throw it back across to his man. So that, there's no chance of that being a clear path foul. But again, another turnover for Tulane. And you had the lead back up to eight. You will to cut back into it again. Two and a half minutes scoring drought for the Warhawks. They've got to respond here. Down a couple possessions. It's LaCour. Pulls up and misses. And that's a it's couple a of consecutive possessions with Bakudo not getting a touch. Cross initiating on a baseline drive. Up and in. Turns and looks at Bafudo. And another bucket for Cross, who's got seven. Well, if you can't out overpower him, blow right by him. Lead back to double digits with five to play. Howell against Forbes. Bafudo begging for the ball inside. Hard to blame him. But he's on the baseline there. Cross did a really nice job defending the post there. And a turnover on ULM, their 15th. Yeah, using the big man's size against them, Caputo kept trying to get lower and lower to establish position and get that ball. And then by the time it finally comes, Cross able to pull that chair right from underneath him and allow him to roll right out of bounds. Tulane gets 4.53 left. Cut Cross, James, Forbes, and Holloway. Forbes had... 19 in the first half, just five in the second. It's Cross on a mid-range, and a soft touch. He was scoreless in the first half, now has nine in the second, and the lead is a dozen. And that's his shot. That free throw line jumper is something that Kevin Cross will turn to very often. It's Bafudo. Deep position, James doubles down, almost stripped it off his thigh. I would imagine that Coach Richard, when they get back to practice, they're going to work really hard on post-entry passes because they're not giving Bafudo the opportunity to catch and turn. Forbes a steal. That's something underrated about his game. He is such a good defender. He came in tops in the American in steals. That was his fourth takeaway today. He's got 19 in the season. It's Cross facing up on Bafudo. A baseline drive, double comes, muscles through it, and Pam finishes again. A little flex, 11 second half points for Cross, and a cushion again for Tulane of 14. Howell in the corner to Powell. Answers. Big hit there for ULM to stay alive, and they're within 11. And, and they're on life support right now. They need some stops defensively. Holloway on a baseline take with the left. Pretty. 
this has really been a tale of two halves. First half was outside shooting for both of these teams. The second half has been a lot more scoring on the inside. Incredible job there by Blackman to keep Pet Paul in front of the half court line and prevent a back court violation. Powell made one seconds ago, passed it up there. Late clock and a foul on Holloway. Usually you say hand in the cookie jar, that time chin in the cookie jar. He got the worst of it. Took one of the chops. Holloway's taking a couple of blows tonight. Yeah, well the lead is 13 for Tulane. Starting to create some separation late behind with Langston Powell, senior from West Monroe, knocks down the first free throw. So Powell has come off the bench and given ULM seven points. Three for five for the floor. No. Guys. If he makes this free throw, which you want to see from ULM at this point now, with only three minutes to go in this game, still an 11 point game. Start picking up and creating some pressure. They're not a team who pressures a lot. Forbes, left alone, got slapped in the face. and <laughs> He was just kind of sitting there waiting for a foul call that finally came. Yeah, he was stunned. <laughs> KB Burdett, our crew chief, with a little smile there. He was just kind of waiting. Ron Hunter was saying, hey, what's going on here? So it's 11 points. That's a killer foul in many ways because now you send a terrific free throw shooter to the line. It's already the bonus situation. It's one and one again. Forbes two for three tonight at the line. And makes the front end. He now has a season high with 25 points. Seventh time in his career he's scored 25 or more. Those six threes. And knocks in that one. 70 to 57. Powell finds Howell and misses in a rebound for Cross. Yeah, that a fadeaway jump shot right there. I mean, he had the time to get himself set and take a better shot. That may have been that last uh, breath there, unless they get some turnovers now. Cook just taking the air out of the ball now. Under two and a half to go. Cook runs into Forbes. Shot clock at five. Step back triple. That's a tough one. Brings it out. Last chance here for ULM. They've got a push. LaCour has been the guy in the second half. Weaves down the lane. Somehow finds Blackman who misses. Forbes rebounds. It's his seventh board. He's really been terrific on the glass so far this season. Came in averaging four and a half. And they will run clock again. Are you surprised ULM's not pressuring more? Yeah, I really am. It's almost as if they conceded this game. It's a three-minute mark. Forbes. No. What a tie to Kerr High with his seventh three, but that one went down. 140 to play in a 13-point game. Blackman finds Howell. Bafudo will take, and he is fouled by Cross. It's just a little surprising. I mean, even on that shot, Bafudo kind of takes a look before he shoots the jumper, and it's like you don't have that kind of time. Go either finish it, and he should be trying to finish it and get the three-point play, or get the shot up. I, I don't understand the lack of urgency by ULM here over these last um, this last 90 seconds going into the final 90 seconds of the game. Two free throws for Bafudo. Native of Brasilia, Brazil. He came in 10 for 12 at the free throw line, 83%. Five years at Mercer playing in the SoCon. Redshirted his first year, then was a contributor, but didn't play heavy minutes. The guy who Keith Richard says is wise beyond his years. Let's talk about a guy who's very smart. Has a bachelor's and master's in civil engineering. He's working towards a master's in business administration as well. Tulane breaks pressure. They find Holloway and get it across. And ULM just kind of backs off now. Which is very surprising. Cook. Through the legs of Holloway. Cook got it back. And now they foul. I, just a little puzzling the way they've gone about it defensively. Yeah, I, I don't understand why fouling now helps. When you're down 12. Yeah, I mean, you might as well. If you think about the possession game, it's still, what, four possessions. May as well play that out, see if you can get a miss. 
they try to get a quick three and get pressure and keep going, but they have not applied ball pressure. And even in the situations where the ball was loose on the floor, there was no one diving for it. So it's just surprising when you maybe had a chance to steal one. If you get a couple of breaks to go your way, you never know. You, you force a turnover here or there. You get a three to go in. You put some pressure on Tulane. But now Tulane doesn't feel any pressure as we head into the last minute. Two free throws for James. Tulane's eight for nine at the line in the second half. And with 65 seconds to go, that ball is kicked. So 14-point Tulane lead. Unless something crazy happens, they're going to hold on and move to 4-0 at home. And ULM is going to stay winless away from home. Blackman in the corner for three. Bafudo tips, cross rebounds. He has his ninth board, so one shy of a double-double now. And he's fouled by Powell with 48 and a half seconds to go. Again, I, I don't see the point. Let's just let the clock run if we're going to do this. You're not teaching something here. You're not setting up something here offensively or defensively. You're just allowing Tulane to pad their lead. Another Kevin Cross stat line that you come to expect. Dozen points, nine rebounds, three assists, a block, a steal, and all while supplying incredible energy as he often does. Does not get the roll there, so he's missed three free throws tonight. He had missed two all season coming in. ULM down 15. LaCour will launch and miss again, and ULM is ice cold. As Cook brings it across, works his way inside and lays it in. Well, I mean, if they're going to give it to you. 14 for Cook. One of four Green Wave players in double figures tonight. 17 point lead. Pafudo working on crossing the lane. 11 second half points for him. Looks like ULM will back off. Cross can dribble this one out. And that'll be all she wrote. It was a nine point ULM lead early. Tulane got up by as many as 16. And they cruise down the stretch to a 15 point win. 